Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Um, my thought for you that I've been uh, playing with this week is on how much of our uh, experience is incomprehensible to our mind, right? <laughs> the yoga practice, we often say that we are trying to actually get beyond just the workings of our mind. And sometimes I think that means that we interpret that as we're trying to get rid of our mind or we're trying to get out of it or we're trying to push it away, that there's something out there that is better than what our mind is doing. And that's not necessarily the point. And the great thing about your mind is that, yeah, it does a lot of that thinking. It can easily fixate on individual things. It can easily fixate on the outside world, it can easily fixate in all these places where we say it's a problem, right? quotations, the problem. But your mind also has the capacity to interpret or experience what we call that infinite state, right? So if we don't train the mind to focus in that direction, then we may never have that experience that is really grounded in our day-to-day -day reality, right? And that's the thing is in yoga, it sometimes feels like that out there is like a special occasion, right? As we get to feel it once in a while, but then we got to come back to this, right? And the idea is to merge those two things so that there's never this feeling of, I have to go outside of myself to experience that. I have to go outside of myself, away from myself in order to experience that. But instead to bring that experience home so that that's what the mind is always working with is the idea that there is space, right? That yeah, there's individual thoughts, there's emotions, there's an expression, there's interpretation, there's interaction, there's all of this physical stuff fluctuating, going on. And then there's the space within which that happens. And all of that is happening, existing within you at all times, right? So the yoga perspective is being able to experience both, not just the things that are going on, but the space in which they are happening. And often we say that if we can remember that there is space, we stop feeling like the thing that is happening, the emotion, the thought, the, the whatever the interaction is, we stop feeling like that's life and death, right? And that's what gives our mind relief is that this emotion right now is not life and death. This decision right now is not life and death. There's space. So it's cultivating that in your mind that instead of that fixation of it's this and then this, then this, then this, then this, there's all the space in which that interaction is happening. So you go to that and say, whatever is happening within this space, I can manage that because there is the space, right? This is not going to be the end of me this moment. So comfortable seat if you're not there already. And there's a lovely beginning of the Isha Upanishad that roughly translates to there is this perfect infiniteness, that completeness that we call the infinite. And it's here. This here, this existence is that complete infiniteness. And that completeness arises from completeness or perfection arises from perfection. And then if you try to take completeness away, it's taken away from completeness, what's left is only completeness, cannot be divided. And so this beginning is to remind us that no matter how much you try to divide up this space into thoughts, ideas, feelings, expressions, no matter how much you try to limit it, limit yourself, it's impossible. That completeness continues to be. So with the eyes closed, feel your breath flowing in, your breath flowing out. And then see if you can breathe for just a moment in a circular breath that has no pause. So in our usual breathing, you can feel at the top of the inhale, there's a subtle pause. At the bottom of the exhale, there's a subtle pause. See if you can breathe in a way where the inhale immediately slides into the exhale. The exhale immediately slides into the inhale. A little bit of a trick, but see if you can get yourself to relax into that. If you try too hard to do it, you're gonna make those pauses bigger. So in a way it's relaxing. But it's also finding that continuous motion of energy, continuous, continuous motion of breath. We think of ourselves as ourselves, as bodies and minds. The yoga perspective is that you're not really your prana. You are this energy that is constantly in motion. At the same time, if the breath wasn't flowing through you in and out, what state would it be in? 
if it wasn't in motion, what state would it be in? Would you say it's less because it's not the inhale or the exhale? Or would you say it's everything that it's always been? And when you're breathing with it, it flows. And when you're not breathing with it, it just is. Or Namada, that's from the Isha Upanishad, that completeness. When it's in motion, you experience it as your body, your mind, your interactions. When it's not in motion, it simply is. Just one more moment, feeling your breath flowing in and out. No pause. And don't worry if it feels like it's tricky and you're not quite getting it. Your next exhale, release the techniques and no longer trying to control the breath, just let it return to its natural state. And then your next exhale, let it out nice and slow, maybe letting the mouth actually open a little bit. So a full exhale. Then bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. We'll open sound of om, deep breath in. And let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release the hands from in front of the heart center, please. And go ahead and come forward onto hands and knees. Just start to move. Never fails that 8 a.m. ohm is always a little bleh. At least it is for me. <laughs> Come on forward to hands and knees. Good. And then start to circle your hips, please. So rotate the pelvis, rotate the shoulders, just start to draw circles with the whole body. Nice. That perfection that is referred to is something that our mind cannot define because the completeness of it, our mind's job is to be able to differentiate, right? So to say that something just is, or that something is uh, without division, right? Without definition, the mind says, well, what am I supposed to do with that? And that's the point is you can't do anything with it. <laughs> that's our obsession, right? Is what am I supposed to do? and tell me that I am this infinite self, but what does that mean I'm supposed to do? Go ahead, start to move your hips the other direction, please. And so the practice, if you are a pranic being, is to notice the way that your prana moves. Notice the way that that energy of thought and emotion, physicality, notice the patterns in your life, this is all prana. And the places where we can influence it is in the breath, the way that we move, the way that we relate to the body and the mind. But we are not going to change our prana into something that it isn't. Come back to center, please. Good, spread your fingers nice and wide, stretch your right leg back behind you, toes tucked on the floor, and then step that foot over your left ankle. So towards the bottom left-hand corner of your mat, toes tucked on the floor, and then look over your left shoulder towards that heel. Good, nice. So your left knee is still on the floor, Stacy. It looks like you have it lifted. There you go. Good, you guys. So you're pressing out through that, that right heel, looking over the shoulder, curl through the ribs. Excellent, you got it. And then come back to center, stretch the right leg back, straight in line with your hip. Good, and then lift it up in line with the hip. So lift it up off the floor, walk the left arm forward towards straight, up on your fingertips, but don't lift the hands. So you're just on the fingertips. Good, and then you're reaching out through that leg, pull up through your low ribs, pull up through your low belly. So you're really getting this feeling of drawing the abdomen, the abdominals up towards the spine. Press into your right hand. So you press into your right hand, feel your lower rib cage hollow up and in. So it's almost like you're rounding up into your back. Good, and then lift the back of your throat. And now maintain that feeling of lift and stretch that right arm up in line with your shoulder. 
sorry, your left arm up in line with your shoulder. You got it. Nice, you guys. One more deep breath, extend. Good, and then release back to hands and knees, please. Nice job. Step your left leg back, toes tucked on the floor. Step it over your right ankle, so towards the bottom right-hand corner of your mat, look over your right shoulder. Good, so you're pressing out through the heel. Keep your hips level with your knees, so don't let your weight fall forward here towards the hands. Move it back. Good, and then looking over the shoulder, curl through the ribs. Nice, Luna, good, Teresa. Awesome, you guys. And then bring that left foot back in line with your hip. So straight back behind you and then lift the leg up off the floor, parallel to the floor. Good, walk the, the right arm forward in front of you up on your fingertips, but don't lift the hand yet. So I want the weight of the hips to be moving back so it stays in line with your knees. So press back through that lifted leg. Good, and then press down into those right fingertips, pull up through the lowest part of your belly, pull up through the lowest part of your ribs. Nice, push into those right fingers. So again, you feel a little bit of, uh, engagement through the shoulder. Nice. And then go ahead and float that right arm up in line with your shoulder, stretching out. And then imagining that there's a straight line from your right fingertips all the way out through your left heel. So you're not lifting a hand and a leg, but you're stretching through the whole cross of your body. Nice, Janelle. Good. And then release back to hands and knees. Excellent, you guys. Hands go just a little bit wider than your shoulders. So move them just slightly wider than where you have them from hands and knees. And then go ahead and tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog. Good. Nice, you guys. Bend your knees just a little bit in your down dog and then bend your elbows out and wide in your down dog. So as you bend the elbows, again, you wanna feel that sensation of the arm bones drawing up into the shoulders. You might even feel the shoulders move up towards your ears, that's okay. But with the elbows bent, now start to lift again that lower rib cage. So hollow up and in with the elbows bent. Good, so the, you're taking the arch out of the lower back, pull the ribs in, that's it. Good, now start to squeeze those elbows so they point towards the back of your mat, but keep your ribs in. Nice, lift the back of your throat. Good, now press through the knuckles of the hands. You take your hips high to the sky, straighten the arms, and then just let your heels soften towards the floor. So it's like you're suspended from your tailbone, pressing down through the hands, but then softening, reaching through the backs of the legs. Excellent, you guys. Right foot steps forward between the hands, lunge. Good, drop your back heel to 45 degrees. You can step that foot a little wider to the left if you need. Warrior one, inhale both arms up to the sky. So your pelvis is facing straight ahead. Good, hip points facing straight ahead. Find the baby toe edge of your back foot. Excellent, you guys. And then with the arms overhead, cross your right wrist in front of your left and then turn your palms towards each other. So your palms are touching, right wrist in front of left, push your palms against each other, and then bend your elbows wide, but keep pressing your palms against each other. Good, draw your low rib cage in, lift the back of your throat, and then see how much pushing those hands together, widening the elbows, you can draw the hands back towards the top of your head just a little bit. Nice. Keep drawing the elbows wide so you keep the shoulder blades really moving on down onto the back. Pull your ribs in, lift your chest. One more breath. Good. And then release the hands, stretch the arms back up alongside the ears. Deep breath in, pull longer through your spine. Get tall in your warrior one and press through your feet. Good. And then exhale, hands down to the floor. Nice job. Spin your back heel up so you're squaring the hips into the lunge. Both hands come inside your front foot. Drop your back knee down to the floor. Walk your hands towards the upper left-hand corner of your mat. Stay up on your fingertips. Separate your hands a little wider. Again, as wide as your shoulders or slightly wider than that. Good. And then just for a couple of breaths, as you exhale, bend your elbows wide up on fingertips. Drop your chest towards the floor. Good. And then press the floor away, straightening the arms on the inhale. Good, and then exhaling, letting your chest drop towards the floor. And again, the idea here is to just let the elbows get really wide so that that sensation of opening the back happens at the same time that you're opening the chest. So it's not about trying to make your arms really buff here, but it's about getting into the chest and upper back. Good, you guys. just interesting to notice how the pauses happen in your breath when you are not consciously trying to soften them. Does your breath happen regularly or is your breath erratic? Does it go all over the place? Do you catch yourself holding your breath during the day? If you do, it's very normal, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Become aware. Good. 
Nice, you guys. Bring yourself all the way back up. Walk your hands back towards that front foot. Excellent. And then lift the back knee, please. Step back to downward facing dog. Good. Remembering that if shoulders are a tricky place for you, keep widening your hands just a little bit wider than your shoulders. Good. And then slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Nice. Feel yourself pressing down into the hands, pull up through your little rib cage again, and lift through the back of your throat. So feel like you are looking slightly forward beyond the tips of your fingers. Nice, Lena. Excellent, you guys. And then lower the knees to the floor, keep your butt up. Slide your chest forward a little further towards the top of your mat, and then bend the elbows, bring your chest to the floor between your thumbs, keep your butt pointing up. Good, so the hips are slightly lifted, butt up. So you're creating that little inchworm position. Press into the hands here. Good, press into your knees, squeeze the ribs in and up. That's it. And then pull all the way forward onto your belly, point the toes, rise up into cobra, lift head, neck, and chest. Again, pushing down into the hands and dragging backwards. Elbows push slightly wide. Nice. And then release plays back up onto hands and knees. Yep. Good. Stretch your right leg back behind you. Lift it up in line with your hip. Good. Left arm walks forward, remembering that before you lift that hand, pull up through your rib cage and get that sensation of really pulling the front of the body to the back. Engage the abdominals to support the spine. And then left arm reaches up in line with your shoulder. Good. And again, that line of energy from your fingertips all the way out through your heel. Find the connection between those two extremes of the body. Nice. Excellent, you guys. Then release that hand, release that knee. Go to the second side, take your left leg back behind you, rooting down through your right shin. So if all of your weight is just in the tip of your right knee, try to move your hips slightly back, press through the whole length of that shin, and then walk the right arm forward. Again, engaging, lift up through the low ribs. Take that right arm up in line with your shoulder or ear. Nice, Andy. Good, Pam. Good, you guys. Find that connection from fingertips to heel. Awesome. And then release back to hands and knees, please. And come back to downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Good. Notice if the elbows feel like they are locked in downward facing dog, or if there's that sensation of collapsing through the upper back. Nice. Continue to pull the low rib cage up and in to support that openness through the armpits where the arms meet the chest. Good. And you can always bend the elbows slightly wide to remind yourself. Excellent. Left foot steps forward between the hands. Yeah. Drop the back heel 45 degrees. Inhale both arms up to warrior one. Should be warrior one, left foot forward. So faith, switch your feet. There you go. <laughs> arms to the sky. Nice, Lori. Good. So hips facing straight ahead. Find that baby toe edge of your back foot. Teresa, I would step your feet just a little bit longer. Yeah. Nice. And then bring your left wrist in front of your right. So the same position you were in before. Turn the palms towards each other. And again, push the palms against each other. So you're pushing the hands wide. As you bend the elbows wide, lift up through the chest, lift through the top of your head. So as those shoulder blades move down, your throat is lifting longer. So again, this is creating a little bit of that feeling of maybe decompression. Keep the palms pressing together. And then any amount, start to draw the hands slightly back towards the top of the head. Good. Keep your ribs drawing in, keep dropping through your tail, front knee over the front ankle. So you feel like, again, that straight line of energy from the top of your head straight down to your tail. Excellent. One more breath, pressing into the hands, elbows wide. Good. And then go ahead, release the cross of the wrist, inhale the arms straight up alongside the ears, pull longer. I should see you get taller as you reach up through your side waist. Good. Nice, you guys. And then release the hands down to the floor. Good, spin your back heel up, please. Drop the back knee, walk both hands inside the front foot. Good, towards that upper right-hand corner of your mat, come up on your fingertips, separate your hands a little wider. Good, and then again, just for a couple of breaths as you're exhaling, let the elbows bend wide as you drop the chest towards the floor. And then the inhale is pressing down, letting yourself rise back up. Nice. Watch what your head is doing here. If you're doing a lot of the action through dropping your head to feel like you're getting lower to the floor, <laughs> keep your head in line with your spine and instead really feel that the action is drawing the heart towards the floor, chest wide. Nice. 
And if we didn't think of everything that goes on in our mind as that constant struggle of right and wrong, life and death, because that's what it kind of equates to, right? Our concepts of right and wrong basically equate to that either being, you know, really alive or not, life and death. Instead, if we interpreted things as this flowing energy, constantly flowing energy, and that you can't destroy it, no matter what you do, you can't destroy something really important. The things that can be destroyed are meant to be dissolved in one way or another to rise again. If our mind forgets that, then we look at everything that we do as life and death. It's a hard way to live. Good. Next time you bring yourself all the way back up, walk your hands back in towards your front foot. Nice. Lift your back knee. Step back to downward facing dog. Good. Reminding yourself to draw up and in through the front rib cage. So the negative space underneath you in downward facing dog is super relevant. Good. So the tops of the thighs are drawing back. Your ribs are drawing forward. Lift the back of your throat. Nice. Really good, Jessica. Excellent, you guys. Take one more full deep breath, feeling again that lift through the pelvis all the way up. Good. And then slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Nice. Lower down slow. You can come through knees again if you'd like or come straight down to your belly as long as you're not collapsing. Really good. Nice, Sally. Point the toes back behind you, pressing down through the hands, rise up into cobra, lift head, neck, and chest. Good. And then exhale, release back down to your belly, please. And come on up onto your forearms for Sphinx pose. Good. Nice, you guys. So you're going to turn your right forearm parallel to the top of your mat and then bend your uh, left knee, kick your heel in towards your butt. Reach back with the left hand to find the foot or the ankle. Good. Yep. The reaching for the quad stretch. You got it. Push down through that right forearm, continue to lift your chest. So you might think here that again, the whole purpose is, oh, we're focusing on the quad now. So I don't have to pay attention to that hand that's underneath me. Push down through that forearm, continue to lift your chest. Good. This creates more of the feeling that you are working the whole body here by keeping that shoulder really engaged. You're working the upper back, opening the chest. And this angle, this curve of the whole body means that you are now also stretching more into your hip flexors. Kick that foot back into your hand, root down through the top of that knee. Again, feeling like you're lifting your butt slightly off of the floor. Good, the front of the thighs slightly off of the floor. Excellent. And then go ahead and release that side, please. Coming back to center. Good, pause for a breath, rooting down through both hands. And then switch to the other side, turning the left forearm parallel to the top of the mat, bend the right knee, kick your heel in towards your butt and then reach back to the foot or the ankle. Make sure that your knee is not going wider than your hip. So sometimes when we go to reach back, the knee slides wide. Draw it in towards the midline of the mat. Good, and again, you're pressing your foot back into your hand, root the top of that right knee down to the floor. So as that top of the knee roots down to the floor, it might feel like the top of the thigh pops up slightly. That's great. Good, and then keep pressing through the left forearm, feel the ribs drawing up and in. Nice, Virginia. Good, Laura. You got it. Good. Keep rooting down, especially if there is thigh, hip, knee stuff. Root down. Excellent, you guys. And then slowly release, please. Good. Walking the hands back alongside your rib cage. Press up to hands and knees, and then come back to child's pose. So let your knees go wide, big toes together to touch. Hips come back to your heels. Good. And arms can be extended here, or if it feels like it's more relief for the shoulders, bend your elbows wide, make a little pillow with your hands, rest your forehead on your hands. Good. Press through your shins, please. So again, you're bringing the weight back, drawing the tops of the thighs back. Good. Press down. Saying earlier this week that it's really interesting how much of our existence we completely take for granted that our mind does not understand, right? And unless you are maybe a physicist, if I say to you, do you really understand how gravity works? And the answer is no, <laughs> right? We really don't. 
Right? Do we understand how the intricacies of this experience is put together? No, we really don't. Mind can't comprehend all of it at once. But we navigate through it. Why? Because we are part of it, prana. Walk your hands back in, please. Good. And then find your way uh, onto your backs. Yes, <laughs> you think so. Come onto your backs, however you'd like. <laughs> it is kind of fun when you get to be on your backs in the middle of class. Okay, find your way onto your back. Excellent. And then bend your knees, please. Good, bring the knees in towards the chest. And then take your right thigh on top of your left. Good, wrapping the inner thighs and pressing the outer shins together. So you're bringing your legs into Garudasana. So you're doing eagle on your back. So your right leg is on top. Don't double wrap the legs. So if you're capable of, of wrapping the ankles as well, don't because you get more shin action when you don't, right? I don't want you to rely on your ankles to keep your legs in this position. I want you to rely on the actual muscles of your inner thighs and your shins to do this. Good. And then that's something just remember that as soon as you get into that full wrap, it's easy to not engage, right? Even when you're doing this standing. So press the shins together, really exaggerate that feeling. So it feels like your inner thighs are really rolling in towards each other as much as they can. Good. Flex the feet. So you have super active uh, legs through the knees. Good. And then take the left arm on top of the right in front of your chest. So you're wrapping the arms as well. Left arm should be closest to your face. Good. You got it. And then don't let the hands fall onto your face. So you have to actually lift the forearms and then draw the arm bones down towards the floor. Good. Keep pressing the shins against each other. Nice. So as you inhale here, reach your pose a little longer. So draw the fingertips towards the top of your head, draw your toes out towards the top, bottom of your mat. So extend almost like you're straightening the legs. They're still wrapped and almost like you're stretching the arms. Good. And then exhale, come back to that eagle position where everything is stacked. Good. And then extend out arms and legs and then squeeze in just a little bit. So you don't have to squeeze fully in, but coming back to center there will feel like a squeeze and then extend all the way out again. Try not to let the hands fall towards your face and then draw all the way back in. I know one more, draw the spine long, keep your abdominals engaged towards your spine and then exhale, come back to that center place. Excellent, release the arms, release the legs up towards the sky. I know, don't collapse. Good, and then bend your knees nice and wide, reach for your ankles or your feet, happy baby. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the funny joke as I say, get on your back and you're like, yes. <laughs> Never fear. They say I can ruin any position for you, so. While you're here, draw your elbows just a little wider into your knees, squeeze your knees towards each other just a little bit. Good. And then go ahead, hug the knees all the way in towards your chest, please. Nice. And then try the second side. So wrap the left thigh on top of the right, pressing the shins together in eagle, flexing your feet. Good. Knees right in line with your hips and then take the right arm on top of the left in front of your chest. Good, wrapping the forearms. And then again, finding that angle where your forearms are not falling onto your face. It lifts slightly. And then the tops of the arm bones can go straight down towards the floor. So again, you want to be drawing down into the floor here. You want the abdominals, the rib cage, the shoulders rooting down into the floor. And then press your shins together. Don't obsess about clenching your thighs because you think that's stronger. Squeeze your shins. Good. Almost feel like you're pushing your thighs apart as you squeeze your shins. Nice. And now start to extend arms a little straighter, legs a little straighter, reaching. Good. And then exhale, just bring yourself back to where you began. So you can go deeper into that crunch if you want. If you do this position a lot, you could totally do that. And then extend back out. But if you don't want to go that deep, just coming back to where you started is you're still working that core body. So then come back in, extend all the way out. Good. Draw it back in. And then one more, extend back out and draw back in. Nice. Good, you guys, unwind arms, unwind legs, stretch both everything up to the sky, arms and legs straight up. 
Good, and then bend the knees wide again, reaching for the ankles or the feet, come back to happy baby. Finding your lower back really rooting to the floor. So that same sensation of rib cage drawing down, lower abdominals drawing down, feel like you are rooting your tail down towards the floor. And if that changes the angle of the knees, let it change the angles of the knees. But you wanna find that feeling of internally rooting down into the floor. Good. This is what helps change that feeling of where the thighs sit in the hip socket, which gives us a lot of relief in outer hip stuff and also can relieve knee issues, right? A lot of our knee issues come from there being a little bit of stuckness in the way our thigh sits in the hip socket. Good. Bring the knees back together, please. Squeeze them in. Beautiful. And then just for a breath, take your feet to the floor, let your knees drop wide, supine baddha konasana. If you need blocks underneath your knees, you can go ahead and place them there. Let the arms come overhead to hold opposite elbows. And if that position for the arms does not work, then place the arms somewhere else, maybe out wide into cactus arms. And again, this is not shavasana, so don't get too comfortable. Don't let your mind wander away too far. Do come back to that sensation as the breath comes in and the breath goes out. Are you really receiving the breath or is it happening so much in the background that you forget about it? Being aware of that space within which all of our activity occurs. As yoga says is that's what it means to have that concept of the infinite and your mind can't hold it. So it doesn't matter if someone tries to say, but what is that space? And you have no answer. Right? What color is it? Yogic term for non-attachment is colorless. We have no attachment, no insistence on things being a certain way. We become colorless. So we let go of that need to have a definition for something to be real, for it to mean something to us. Instead, we can say the space within which everything resides. Of course it's real, otherwise all these experiences would not be real. We are not limited to the edges, the boundaries of each thought. We're asked to remember the one who is thinking the one who is observing, the one who is in fact living. So you are not this body, you are not this mind, you are not limited to those definitions that your mind has created about those things. There's space, so whatever you wish to change, you can. Whatever you wish to adjust, you can, because it's not life or death. You cannot destroy the perfection that is. You can't take away from it. Take one more full breath. And then release the arms back alongside you. Bring the knees up to face the ceiling so you can plant your feet. Good. And set the arms alongside you. You can bend the elbows into robot arms. So fingers pointing up towards the ceiling. Press down through the upper arms. And as you push down, so you haven't lifted your hips yet, just push down through the upper arms. And excuse me, feel as though you are pushing those elbow tips slightly wide. So as you push down, you also push wide. Good. And then press into your feet. And before you lift anything else, draw your hips towards your heels. So as you press into your feet, drag backwards. So it's like your butt is going to meet your heels. Good. Now go ahead and lift the back of your heart, lift your hips up, but maintain this feeling of dragging back on your heels like your butt is going to move towards your toes. So weight in the balls of your feet. So Olga, more weight in the balls of your feet. Yeah, more away from the heels towards the top of your mat. Press those feet flat. Yep, yep, yep. Good, you guys. And then slowly release. Excellent. If you have a block, Place a block between your upper thighs. If you don't have a block, imagine that you have a block. Place it between the upper thighs. Good. And then bring the arms back to the same position, robot arms. 
So again, with that uh, block between the thighs, squeeze the block a lot. So just focus on that squeezing in sensation. And now keep the squeeze of your thighs, but at the same time, try and pull your sit bones wide. So it's like you're squeezing your inner thighs, but then you're pulling your butt cheeks wide. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, why would I do that? Because this decompresses your hips and your lower back. If you just squeeze in, what you do is you clench your glutes towards your tailbone. You compress everything. It makes your hips tighter. But you want to have this engagement of the inner thighs. So inner thighs squeeze, sit bones go wide. Good, maintain that, root down through the arms, same thing, elbows press down, press slightly wide, lift the hips up. Continue to hug the block with your inner thighs, but try to pull your sit bones wide. It's gonna be harder now because your glutes are engaged, or they should be anyway. Good, yeah. So it might not be the highest bridge you've ever come to, but it's one that's really working with your lower body. Good, and then release the hips back down to the floor. Nice. Third bridge pose, you can either keep the block here if it's really helping you feel what the legs are, uh, the opportunity of what the legs are doing. Or if you think you've got it, you want to place the block to the side and place the block back to the side. Good. So up to you. Nice. I want you to do the same thing, though. Even without the block, I want you to feel that sensation of imagining you are squeezing the inner thighs in towards something and then pulling your sit bones wide. So the legs are engaged, like they're bracketed from the outside and the inside, pushing and widening, same amount. And then press into the upper arms, start to lift from the back of your heart, lift your hips, come into that third bridge pose, still pulling your butt towards your heels. Nice, really good, Olga. You got it, Sally. Good, Teresa. Nice, weight towards the balls of your feet. I know. Good, Lori. Nice, Jessica. And then slowly release the hips all the way down to the floor. Good, place your block to the side if it is still between the legs. Nice job. And then draw your right knee in towards your chest, please. Good, stretch your left leg down to the floor. Nice, as you draw that shin in, squeeze it in, push your shin back against your hands. Mm -hmm. Good, and then draw your low back down towards the floor at the same time. So as you press the shin away, draw back and down through your sacrum. Beautiful. Nice, you guys. And then go ahead and release that hold behind your thigh, please. Extend your right heel up towards the ceiling. So quad stretch, sorry, hamstring stretch. Good, press your thigh back against your hands and root your tailbone down towards the floor. So it's like the groins are rolling down, your low back is rolling down towards the floor. Low rib cage softens to the floor, press your thigh against your hands. So the pressing is more important than the angle of the leg, right? It's even more important than if the knee is completely straight. So keep reaching through the underside of your heel, but push the thigh against your hands. Yes. Excellent. Good. And then bend that knee back in towards your chest, squeeze. Great job. And then extend the right leg down to the floor, bring the left knee in towards the chest. Hug, hug, hug. Good. So hands are in front of the shins, press the shin against the hand. So again, it's like you're decompressing. And as you push the shin out into the hands, draw your low back down to the floor. Good, so you've got to move in both directions for there to be that opportunity for, again, bones to reorient themselves. Nice. I know, keep holding it. It's easy to do it for a breath. It's not so easy to do it mindfully for more than a couple breaths. Good. And then go ahead and let that go. Bring the hands behind the thigh. Extend your left heel up towards the ceiling. Push your thigh against your hand. So again, don't get into the, I've got to get my thigh towards my belly. Instead, root down through your sacrum. Keep that right thigh, the extended leg on the floor, rooting down. Press your thigh against your hands and then pull up through the underside of that heel. So again, your knee does not have to be completely straight for there to be a great hamstring stretch. Your knee does not have to be completely straight. Push the thigh against the hands. Root down through your tail. Good. Shaking is awesome. Nice, you guys. And then hug that knee back in towards your chest. Excellent. And then release that foot down to the floor. Extend both legs out in front of you. Good, turn over onto your belly, please. Good. Coming up onto your forearms. 
You're going to turn your right forearm parallel to the top of your mat again, and then turn your left forearm parallel as well in front of the right one. So you have both arms parallel to the front of your mat. And then you're going to walk your fingers, both of them, towards the outer edges of your mat until your elbows start to come in line with each other. Good. As deep as you want to go there. Nice. Don't let the arms come really far forward away from your chest. They should still be pretty much underneath your shoulders. Good. And then go ahead and drop the chin towards your chest or drop the chin onto the arms. Nice. The low back feels a little bit achy here. Separate the feet a little wider. Just breathe into that fantastic sensation of your shoulders. <laughs> Good. It's actually a yin posture, referred to as folded wing or broken wing, <laughs> depending on your attitude, I guess. And that's completely the way that the mind can work, right? Same position and your mind can say, oh, it's folded. Right? I'm not using it in the same way at this moment. Or I can say I'm broken. I can experience this world as something that is innately whole. Knowing that all of the pieces that are shifting and changing and that I don't understand, it doesn't mean that the wholeness isn't there. It's just I can't see all of it. Or my mind can categorize every single thing that I think is broken. I live in a world that is broken. And the beauty is that knowing that there is wholeness doesn't mean that there's nothing that can be changed, that our experience of interacting with each other can't be improved. Of course it can. But to erase that thought that you are somehow this broken, limited being, that might make a difference. Try it and let me know. Go ahead, slowly unwind, please. Coming back towards center. So scooting those elbows wide as the hands come back in. Good. Unwrap the arms. Come on down to your belly for a moment. All the way down, chest to the floor. And stretch your arms reaching back towards your feet. The palms facing down. Good. Press down into your fingertips. Hands can go a little wider away from your side ribs. And then feel as though you are pressing your pubis bones to the very base, the bottom of your pelvis, down and forward towards the floor. So again, as you press down and forward, you might feel your lower back lengthen a little bit. Great. And then extend out through the legs. Keep that feeling of the pubis moving forward as you lift your feet up off the floor, legs up off the floor. Good. And then push into your fingertips. Start to lift your upper chest without lifting the hands. Just push into the fingertips. Feel your chest begin to lift. Good. Pull up through your lower rib cage. Nice. And then float those hands up off the floor, but still have that sensation in your upper back of pushing down. So as you bear down through the arms, you might feel your back wake up just a little bit more. Locust pose. Excellent, you guys. Don't clench your butt. I know. Engage the shins. This is that squeeze the shins, but separate your sit bones thing. Good. And then release. Excellent. Come on back up onto your forearms. I know you just want more rest, but we've got a lot to do. Come back up onto your forearms. Left forearm comes parallel to the top of your mat closest to your body. Right forearm parallels above that, just above that. So you should have the other cross from what you had before. And then walk your fingers towards the outer edges of your mat till the elbows come in line. Good, or as deep as you wanna go. Again, the elbows might not be in line with each other, depends on your shoulders. And then go ahead when you're there, drop the chin towards the chest or drop the chin onto your arms or place a block underneath your head. Sometimes that's what feels the most supportive. Good. I always feel like I need to say sorry, not sorry when I know who's been in class a lot during a week. And I'm like, oh, some of you have done this pose multiple times this week. <laughs> if you were in Linda's class on Wednesday, I know she did this good for you. It won't break you. Poor Namida. Completeness, wholeness. It's always in existence. And if you try to separate it, take it away, what is left is wholeness. So 
So if you know that this moment is not in fact life and death, that you're not going to destroy what is innately you, you're not going to destroy what is innately holding up this existence. That's just prana moving, energy moving. And if something is ready to dissolve, it needs you to allow it to dissolve. And if something is ready to be born, it needs you to engage with it as it is born. that the wholeness, the completeness is beyond what your mind can perceive. So don't get caught up in trying to do that and trying to limit it to something your mind can define. We'll never feel satisfied. We can catch glimpses and recognize that there is that infinite space. We catch a glimpse. The mind says, yeah, I've always known that that is there. just been very busy looking at everything else. Take one more breath and then slowly unwind the arms. So walking the fingers back in. Nice, again, dropping the chest down to the floor. Good. And then stretching the arms, reaching back alongside the body, palms facing down. Same pose, locust pose, press down through the pubis bone. So again, engaging through the legs, extending out through the inner thigh, start to lift the legs up off the floor, press your fingertips down into the floor. Go to pubis bone down, extend out through the legs. Again, watching that you are not clenching your butt towards your tail. So your glutes are gonna engage, but you wanna keep them in that sensation of still pushing wide through your sit bones, hug your shins. And then as you press into your hands, begin to lift your chest as well. Good. And instead of pushing the ribs forward into the floor, draw them up and in. So again, you feel that middle part of your back get super full. Nice. Throat lifts. And then float the arms up alongside your torso as well, but still have that feeling of, of bearing down. Good. And then optional here, if you want to bend your knees from right where you are, lift your hands a little higher and reach back for your feet or your ankles, transition into bow pose. Go for it. If you have to do a lot of contortionist stuff to get there, my suggestion is stay where you are. Nice, Andy. Good. Hug those knees in, Stacey. Beautiful. One more breath. Pubis bone still down and forward. Root down through the tops of the thighs just a little bit and then lift the chest higher. Yeah. And then slowly release. Nice job. Good, you guys. Take a moment and then press up onto hands and knees. Come back to child's pose, knees wide. Big toes, toes, big toes together to touch. Good, pressing down through the shins. Reaching the arms back, reaching your hands back towards your feet. Good, holding the ankles or the feet or just having your arms extended back behind you. Start to roll up onto the crown of your head, lifting your hips, rounding into your back. Hair pose. Good. So it's, again, it's nice if the arms are extended towards your feet, but if that doesn't work for you, have the hands wherever they need to be. But because again, you want the energy of the pose to be you really holding yourself from inside, not from pushing into the hands. Good. And then slowly release the hips back down. Excellent. Come on up to sit. Stretch the legs out in front of you. Legs out in front of you. Good, and then bend your knees, please. So you come up on your heels. So it's like you're in a seated squat pose. So your heels are, are a little wider than your hips. Knees are bent, but you're up on your heels. So your feet are not flat. Yep, separate your feet a little wider. Good, and then take your right arm inside that right foot. So you can press your right elbow or your right forearm up against your inner knee and take the left arm up to the sky. And as you're pressing wide through that right arm, pressing into that right knee or that right shin, squeeze that knee in. So again, you're adding pressure and opening the ribs. Good. Nice, you guys. Again, that isometric pressure is really helpful for helping bones realign. Beautiful. And then come back to center, please. Take the left arm inside your left knee, left shin. So again, you're pushing wide through the arm, squeezing in with the knee. Take the right arm up to the sky, open twist. Squeeze in with the leg and then push wide with the arm. 
Nice, Laura. Good, Virginia. Nice, Harriet. Good, Jessica. Good. Really get your legs engaged here, you guys, and then send your tail slightly up and back. Good. And then release back to center, please. Beautiful. Bring the bottoms of the feet together. Let your knees drop wide. Baddha Konasana. If you need a blanket underneath your seat, go ahead and make sure you have that. And then curling your toes away from each other. So baby toe edges of the foot root down, but curl your toes away from each other. Good. And then as you hold onto the ankles, pull up just slightly higher. So pull up through your ankles. Good. And as you pull up through your ankles, press down into your sit bones. So you pull up through the ankles, push down into your seat. Good. And then start to squeeze your knees up. Yeah. And then you can press your elbows wide into the tops of the thighs or into the inner thighs and your knees. So your knees are squeezing up, but you're pressing wide through your elbows. Yep. I want you to feel your inner thighs do a little bit of a burn. Good. And then let, let it go. Let your knees just drop wide. Good. And then do it again. Squeeze the knees up. As your knees squeeze up, your ankles lift up, push down into your seat. So again, you're doing both. Squeeze in and then push the elbows wide if your thighs are coming in contact with your elbows. If they're not, don't worry about it. Squeeze up, squeeze up, squeeze up. Press down through your sit bones. Good. And then let it go. Again, not pushing the knees wide, just not squeezing anymore. And then one more time, squeeze the knees up. Again, keeping those baby toes rooted to the floor, press down into your sit bones, widen the elbows. So as you're squeezing in, you're also pushing wide through the arms. I know this is a lot of work. Yeah. Good. And then go ahead and release, please. Letting the knees just drop to where they're going to drop. And then walk yourself forward, forward fold any way you'd like. You can continue to hold the feet or extend the arms out in front of you. Even here, can you imagine your groins rolling down to the floor and your tail shifts slightly up and back behind you. So it's like you're rolling towards the front edge of your sit bones. Nice. And then slowly walk yourself all the way back up. Beautiful. Stretch your right leg straight out in front of you. Good. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Inhale the arms up alongside your ears. Do a little twist of your torso towards the right and then bow over the right thigh. Janu Shoshasana. Good. Keep your feet awake. So keep rooting down through the heel. Nice. So Sally, I would let your hands just come to rest somewhere. They're alongside the legs or holding a block, whatever you want, but let them rest somewhere. Nice, Pam. Nice, Sandy. Good, everybody. I feel like even if the conversation of prana doesn't mean anything to you, you're like, I don't even know what prana is. Another one of those things that's incomprehensible to the mind. What is it? I don't know. It's the thing that inspired you to be. What is that? I don't know. And yet here we are, right? That question of what inspired life to be. We don't know. Lucky coordination of chemicals, maybe. Or something else. And that's something else we call it prana. That's something else that is not defined by what our mind is able to perceive. We call it perfection, completeness, we call it space. Walk yourself all the way back up, all sorts of fancy names to call it. Basically just our mind saying, I don't know what it is. So I give it this name. <laughs> Stretch your left leg straight out in front of you. Bend your right knee in towards your chest, bottom of the foot to the inside of the left thigh. Let your knee go wide. John or Shoshasana, second side, inhale the arms up alongside your ears. Little twist to your left, and then bow over the extended leg. And it's part of our practice to know that we do not have to understand everything just through our thinking. That you can't even understand fully yourself just through your thinking. what we consider to be beyond the mind is not beyond you. It's really that you have never been limited to your mind. 
was allowing your awareness to expand beyond that realm of thinking. Get a glimpse that there is space. That space is you. There is a cohesiveness to this existence. That cohesiveness holds you. It includes you. Whatever is going on in your mind, in your small set of interactions in the world, it is not life or death. energy and motion. And if it became still, what would it be? That's the practice of yoga, your energy and motion, all of you. And if you brought that energy into stillness, what would it be? The answer that we're given is perfection, completeness, wholeness. Satnam, I am all those things. Walk yourself all the way back up. Excellent. And then go ahead and find your way onto your backs yet again. If you're in the room with me, turn your heads to face the center of the room as you come down onto your backs. If you're at home, any way you'd like. Come on down. Good. And take the right ankle on top of your left thigh, please. Lift your left shin parallel to the floor. Right ankle on left thigh, left shin parallel to the floor. You can hold the thigh if you like. Or you can let the legs hold themselves. Contemplate if your mind was still for a moment. What is your basic state of being? Not what is the nature of your thoughts, but what is your basic state of being? What's the background of all of your thinking? Can you even start to imagine touching that with your awareness? If the answer is no, you're too hungry. All right, take one more breath, enjoy that. Good, and then slide that right leg all the way on top of the left so the uh, inner thighs are touching. Good, bring the shins towards each other, scoot your hips over to the right, drop your knees to the left so you come into spinal twist with the legs wrapped. And if your knees or your hips do not enjoy twisting in that position, then undo the wrap and just stack the knees on top of each other, letting the knees fall to the left. Often said that we practice to become in touch with our prana so that it can teach us who we are. It can guide the mind. Not the mind is in charge of the prana, but the prana guides the mind. And slowly unwind your legs, please. Come back to center. I think both feet come to the floor for a moment. Then take your left ankle over your right thigh. Lift the right shin parallel to the floor. Again, reaching through to hold the leg if you'd like. Or again, you can allow the legs to be lifted and the arms to be relaxed. Just keep your feet a little bit awake. Your low back rooting to the floor. Notice again, if your breathing is happening so much in the background that you've forgotten about it. Or if you're actually receiving the inhale and the exhale.
sometimes even that, oh, I should actually receive this breath, widens our vision. The mind gets a sense of whatever it was just wrapped up in, oh, there's something else, there's more. And go ahead and release the thigh, take the left knee all the way on top of the right, so stacking the knees. Good, bring the shins towards each other, scoot your hips over to the left and drop your knees to the right. Spinal twist with the knees wrapped. And again, you have the option to unwind the legs. If that works better. And slowly unwind the legs, come back towards center, squeezing the knees in towards your chest. Bring your forehead up to meet your knees, so hug into that little ball, drawing the abdominals back in towards your spine, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then slowly release, extending the legs out in front of you, arms alongside you, palms facing up, almost that upside down locust position. Make sure you are warm. Let yourself fall into, again, receiving the inhale and the exhale. Your breath becomes front and center. Whatever the mind is doing, let it do it within that background of the breath.
Very gently bring the awareness back to your breath if it's wandered away. The body begin to stretch, move, whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. Take a moment and then begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. And the hands come back together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. Your basic state of being that is underlying all of your other activity, your thinking, your action in the world. Is that completion? And that there, whatever is there is complete and infinite. And completeness arises from completeness and if completeness is taken away from completeness, only completeness remains. Your basic state of being is one that is beyond the comprehension of your thinking mind. And if all of that energy that you consider to be you in motion became still, what would it be? That's what we practice for, is to catch a glimpse of that. Because what would you be if you weren't always running? Because that's what you are right now and tomorrow and forever. That is what you are. So you're beyond already the contents of your mind. You are already beyond. Bring that experience of infinite home. And that's what we call yoga is when there's no longer separation between that completeness and what you feel yourself to be breath by breath every moment. It's already there. So let your mind wrap itself in that completeness, wholeness. Breath by breath. Close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your day. Great rest of your week until I see you again. Thank you. Thank you. That was-